What if every religion was a nation in 1444? Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be checking out what would happen if every religion was a nation in 1444. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. So as you can see, I've made every religion in the game into one single nation and let's see how the nations are divided up. Starting in North America, which all of it is totemist, I gave it all to the nation of Comanche. In Central America, we have Aztec representing the Nahuatl religion and Maya representing the Mayan religion. In South America, we have Inca representing Inti and basically all around the world, I have the nation of Potiguara, which starts uh, in this province right Right here you probably know them because you can't tell them apart from Portugal's colonies but I gave them all the animist provinces in the world so as you can see they're present right here all over Oceania maritime Southeast Asia mainland Southeast Asia and even in southern China and the northern Japanese islands so that should be pretty funny. Over here we have Ming representing Confucian and Tibet representing Vajrayana. Oirat is Tengri and Dai Viet is Mahayana. We have Bharat representing the Hindu religion and this is where they are present. And we have Dahomey representing the fetishist faith. Now going over in this area I do have the Ottomans representing the Sunni faith and Persia represents the Shia faith with the most border Guri provinces if I have to say so myself. And we have have Oman representing Ibadi. They also have some Bordigore here and there. And Ethiopia represents the Coptic religion and Semien represents the two Jewish provinces. Yazd also has the two Zoroastrian provinces. Going over to Europe, I did actually set up Reformed, Anglican, Protestant, Hussite, and even Norse nations. Even though these four religions aren't present at the start, I figured I'd add them in for added flavor. So we have France representing the Reformed faith, Bohemia, and their two subjects integrated represent the Hussite faith, Brandenburg owns the North Germany and Lowlands regions and it represents the Protestant faith and England owns the entire Great Britain region representing the Anglican faith. Sweden owns all of Scandinavia and they are Norse and finally we have Byzantium representing the Orthodox faith and we have the Kingdom of God representing the Catholic faith. Of course this is just a Pope with a different name and Japan is Shinto and Siam represents the Theravada faith. We also have the Australian nation of Eora representing the Ultra Ringa religion. So those are all the religions in the base game of EU4. In the great powers list we have the Ottomans at number one, followed by the Kingdom of God at number two, Bharat at number three, Byzantium at number four, Putiguara at number five, Ming at number six, Comanche at number seven, and we have Brandenburg at number eight. So place your bets in the comments below. Which nation do you think will come out on top and which nation will be the biggest winner and the biggest loser and we'll check back in in about 40 years so it has been almost 50 years since the start of the game and let's take a look at everything that has changed starting in north america comanche declared on maya and took some of their provinces over here in fact they have already converted three out of the four that they took with only this one being left to convert and they also made them release these two nations right here Potiguara declared on inca thinking they could smash them up really easily but in fact Inca won that war and as we can see well they've also already converted the provinces that they took. Dahomey did declare war on Ethiopia and took some provinces over here and as we can see the nation of Semien doesn't even exist anymore. In fact the two Jewish provinces are already Coptic and this nation has popped out as well and so has this one. Brunei popped out of the Ottomans and then Baharat declared on them and took some provinces and now the Ottomans are doing a reconquest against them. Siam lost their provinces right here to Ming. Basically Ming reconquered them and then Tibet lost both to Ming and to Oiret. Although they don't seem to have taken anything but they were losing a war to both Ming and Oiret. Two separate wars. The Ottomans have actually been the most active nation fighting a bunch of nations. In fact they declared on Byzantium twice and beat them twice although they didn't take too much as we can see. These are basically the provinces that they took the ones they haven't converted yet. They have haven't taken Constantinople still, but they did take some provinces from Ethiopia right here as we can see. Byzantium also lost to the Kingdom of God 
also twice and as we can see the kingdom of god took back their exclave over here and basically connected their lands and they took some more provinces over here as well as over here if we click on the religious map mode we can see what they took basically everything they haven't converted yet but the kingdom of god has different problems right now basically Usaid, protestant and reformed all have a center of reformation active in fact there are two protestant centers of reformation and they are converting the catholic provinces will this be a big problem for the pope we have to wait and see but france also took a lot of provinces from brandenburg as we can see up here basically they have converted some of them but brandenburg did own the entire lowlands region and now france owns about half of it and we'll check back in in the age of reformation so it's been another 50 or so years and let's take a look at everything that has changed in central america some more nations have popped out of maya and they're currently losing a war against cocomes ming seems to be exploding they are at at zero mandate right now and they've also lost a war to Oirat previously as we can see Oirat have taken some provinces over here and that did cause Korea to pop out of Ming. So Ming are having rebel problems as we can see right here Chi separatists, Jin, Shun and Dali down here but they're also losing another war to Oirat right now in the third Oirat conquest of Ming. So this is really no surprise Ming blowing up. The Maldives have also popped out of the Ottomans. Over in Europe Brandenburg's seems to be the nation that has been suffering the most and it is the age of reformation by the way these centers of reformation are still converting but as we can see brandenburg have lost quite a bit more territory to france and this time sweden as well so france has taken some more provinces over here in the lowlands but in the north germany regions as well and sweden have moved and taken over the holstein area as well as some areas right here and over here and actually they have taken quite a bit of provinces maybe about a dozen or so and they have converted them all so it looks like Norse Sweden is doing pretty well although they have basically attacked the weakest nation that they could. Byzantium seems to have stabilized a bit now that they are guaranteed by the kingdom of God so they haven't been declared on by the Ottomans anymore or the kingdom of God for that matter. They did lose out some provinces to Oirat right here as we can see. Surprisingly Yazd is still alive. Barat have taken over that one province over here but this one right here between Persia and the Ottomans is still alive and they are guaranteed by Persia so it makes sense. Speaking of Persia they are having a hard time expanding since they can pretty much only expand into the ottomans they could declare on ethiopia over here so i don't know why they're not doing it also togurt have popped out over here and taken over the provinces which oman owned and surprisingly oman is still alive too the top nations are the kingdom of god and the ottomans so let's see what ideas they've taken the kingdom of god has taken economic ideas divine ideas pretty fitting and diplo ideas while the ottomans have taken innovative quantity and influence so they're gonna be getting even stronger and we'll check back in once again just before for the age of absolutism starts so it has been another 50 years and things have changed quite a bit so let's take a look first off in south america potiguara has been well losing to rebels obviously as we can see a couple of nations have popped out from them including tapuya guarani and mapuche so potiguara isn't doing too good even in their sort of main domain which is south america they haven't lost any more provinces to inca though in central america aztec has been losing two comanches which in turn allowed Maya to grow a little bit. If we go into the religion map mode, basically we can see the provinces they have lost. But hold on, wait a minute. Potiguara became Confucian? Alright, this is definitely something I didn't expect. Speaking of them, they are losing two wars to Ming and Bara right now, so let's take a look at them. Basically, this is where the main fighting is going on and over here as well, and I do predict that they will actually lose these wars. They do have quite a lot of tributaries though, as we can see right here. Basically, some Southeast Asian nations and Aotearoa popped out from them, which is pretty cool. Going back to North America, Comanche have been expanding into Central America. They're doing pretty good actually, better than I expected. This is what has happened in Southeast Asia, basically we have a bunch of countries popping out. We have Champasak right here, Luang Prabang, Dali, Changsheng, Miao, Yi, and a bunch of other nations. And even Ainu has popped out over here once again from Potiguara. So the decline of Potiguara seems to be the reason all these nations are popping out. Moving over to Europe now, you might notice something different over here. Well, the Ottomans actually made a big mistake earlier. So the Ottomans declared on Byzantium, and as you 
you know, Byzantium is guaranteed by the Kingdom of God and they are allied to Persia. So basically the Ottomans declared on them, but their armies weren't over here. They were somewhere around here and basically this allowed the Pope and Byzantium to push into the Ottomans and basically the Ottomans were fighting the Pope, Byzantium and Persia. During this, since they were losing, I guess this made Dahomey and Parat declare on them since they're allied. I don't know which one of them two declared the war. I think Dahomey since they have taken some provinces from the Ottomans, but basically the Ottomans lost both of those wars and as a result of that Byzantium have expanded into Anatolia, which is pretty cool. The comeback is real or maybe not. Maybe the Ottomans will smash them pretty soon, but we also have Syria right here and Persia have grown a bit too, mainly in this region. We can see the provinces that Dahomey took right here and in the Ethiopia region. It seems that Persia has already converted the provinces they took, which is pretty cool. And here are the ones Byzantium took, they're converting as well. And they've also lost provinces too. Oiret? I don't know how that happened, to be honest. But anyway, Ming is exploding and so is Brandenburg. Brandenburg continue to lose out to all these nations. Well, not all of them, basically France and Sweden. Sweden have connected all their border where they had up here and France have pushed even further into the lowlands and into North Germany. The religious centers are still converting. We do have two of them as far as I can see, one Protestant one and one Reformed one, but they're not doing a whole lot of damage. Basically, they convert and the Pope converts them back. Anyway, that's what's been going on and they will stop converting pretty soon because the age of Reformation is about to end and we're about to enter the age of absolutism where expansion will really ramp up. Oh yeah, the Pope is almost done doing the Reconquista and they've also taken some provinces in Tunis. Now it's 1640, well into the age of absolutism and let's take a look at what everyone has been up to. The most notable changes are in South America where Potiguara obviously blew up. We have a bunch of nations here in their place like Charua, Guarani, Tapuya, Carib and Mapuche and Inca has taken advantage of that as well expanding their borders. Basically Potiguara went from one of the biggest empires in the world representing the animist religion in South America, Greece Greenland and in Oceania and Southeast Asia, but now they suck. Not too much changes in Central America, Maya has expanded a bit, Comanche isn't doing anything almost, but they have taken over some provinces here in the Caribbean. In Asia though, it's a different story, basically Bharat has been expanding in the Indonesian islands and in the Philippines as well as in mainland Southeast Asia taking some provinces over here. Diviet is basically very weak, they represented Mahayana. Ming is even smaller, we can see that Oret has pushed into this area of China and they've even taken Beijing and Korea has reconsolidated itself a little bit. As a result of that, Tibet also has grown just a bit basically in this area and Dali has grown quite a lot. If you remember, they were about this size, but now they're pretty big. You know what I want to know? Why does Yazd, I mean, shout out to Yazd first of all, but why do they still exist in 1640? They have no allies, the Ottomans and Persia have a CB on them, but they're not declaring. And it's the same situation with Oman. Shout out to Oman. Once again, they represent a body. But once again, the Ottomans and Persia have a CB on them, but they aren't doing anything. Ethiopia is guaranteed by Dahomey, so you would understand that. But it's the same situation over here. We have Mazab and Togurt. They have CBs on each other and the Ottomans have a CB on them, but no one is doing anything. You know, sometimes I wonder what the AI thinks. The Pope is still number one, but Barat is only five dev away from taking over. So will they do that or will they collapse? And we'll check back in in about 50 years. So now it's 1690, 50 years after we last checked in and even from this far zoomed out I think you can notice the huge changes that I'm about to show you. Starting off with South America, Inca have expanded massively into those nations that popped out of Potiguara and Potiguara going from owning almost all of South America to just two provinces over here. Sad. They own Greenland of course and they still have some provinces in Oceania but nations are popping out over here too. Going over to Southeast Asia we can see that Tidore has expanded quite a bit as well as this nation of Makassar basically cleaning up Potiguara once again but Bharat has been expanding a lot. Basically they had Hindu lands over here and over here but now they've connected all of those lands taking over the Animist and Theravada as well as the Mahayana provinces which Siam, 
Ivy at and Potiguara owned. So huge shout out to Para. They've been doing really well. China is still fractured. Why does this happen in every single game? I guess it is accurate to real life though. You know, having the mandate of heaven isn't such a good thing. I think Tibet owns it now. No, actually it's Oirat. Oirat holds the mandate of heaven. Will they be able to form Yuan? I don't think so. They're suffering from a lot of rebels right now. But Ming has reconsolidated a little bit, taking over some of the nations that have popped out like Yu and stuff like that. Tibet has also shrunk. They have been defeated by Persia. Persia took some lands right here and they've been defeated by Oirat. Oirat took some land over here. Now the elephant in the room, or should I say the onion hat in the room, basically the Ottomans. Well, you can see what's going on with them. They're losing to Byzantium and Dahomey right now and they're losing big time. But before this, the kingdom of God declared on them, took a bunch of provinces over here and then they just declared on them again. That happened about 10 years ago and they took even more provinces right here and they also fed Morocco, which is a Catholic monastic order. By the way, we have Grandmaster Mohammed I and I think it's the same situation with Tunis. Yep, they're also a Catholic monastic order. Grandmaster Mohammed V, so that's pretty cursed. And we also have Kabilia right here. They're also Catholic. And so is Togurt. All right, all right, I'm gonna stop checking. But basically, the Kingdom of God decimated the Ottomans in two wars. They just finished their second war and a bunch of nations popped out from that. We have Baluchistan, Kiva, Kalmyk. These guys got out due to rebels. Kazakh right here. Then Oret declared on the Ottomans, beat them, made them release nations and took some land and now finally Byzantium and Dahomey have declared on them and they're fighting Byzantium, Brandenburg, Dahomey and Barat. They're about to take a big hill and I don't think the Ottomans can recover from this. I don't exactly know why they declined so much. Is it because their land was so fractured, basically having three regions that weren't really connected so that stopped them from consolidating power or is it because they didn't have Constantinople or is it because they're still suffering from that initial stupid war they declared against Byzantium where their troops were into place and that made them lose that war and they've been suffering ever since but Persia also gained some lands they didn't declare on the Ottomans directly but Khorasan popped out right here and that's how they increased their land they immediately declared on them by the way Brandenburg is in a PU under Byzantium they obviously had the same dynasty the Paleologos dynasty which they don't have anymore obviously but they did have the same dynasty as Byzantium and they fell into a PU Great Britain have also started their colonial expansion finally and they have one province on May mainland South America. Is this the end for Inca? It remains to be seen. But basically lots of crazy stuff have started happening and I can't wait to see what the age of revolutions holds for us. Do you think any nation will become revolutionary? Let's wait and see and we'll check back in in about 40 years. Now it's 1742 well into the age of revolutions and first let's take a look if anyone is becoming revolutionary and we can see that the revolution has spread to almost the entirety of Western Europe and it did spawn in France. Surprise surprise. Actually it doesn't happen that often but oh well and basically the revolution has spread to all of France as we can see right here so I think they will be becoming revolutionary pretty soon anyway going down to South America we can see that well the British have basically destroyed Inca sad Inca noises but oh well what are you gonna do the British are gonna colonize some things never change at least it is in Castile and Portugal this time am I right but anyway Inca have been destroyed thanks to the British Tapuya is prospering right here and so are these other nations they're not doing too bad. Going to Africa, Dahomey has expanded into the Ottomans once again taking some more provinces in this region as well as in this region right here. Ethiopia is still alive funnily enough. They do have one province right here. That's it. They're an OPM. And we have this nation of Jima right here. I guess they popped out from the Ottomans. Speaking of the Ottomans, they have been getting decimated even more. They're in a war with Morocco right now, which Morocco declared funnily enough along with Kabia and Togurt. But the Ottomans are actually winning this war by a little bit so we'll have to wait and see what happens there but they've been losing even more Barat are allied with Byzantium and Persia dude in all of these videos if Biz and Persia exist they always ally to pummel the Ottomans which is pretty funny but Barat are allied to them Persia and Dahomey so all four of these nations declared on the Ottomans Persia gained a lot of land Barat gained land right here too and Byzantium have expanded further in this region and in this region as well Kazakh has also grown quite a bit pushing in to the Ottomans and Oirat has collapsed and they're losing three wars right now. I swear, holding the mandate of heaven 
it's cursed. I mean, it's always been like that, but it's still funny to see. Either way, a lot of nations have popped out from where we're at, like Manchu, Kalka, Buryatia, Siberia, Perm, and even Muscovy right here. That's pretty funny. Will they inform Russia? I don't think so. And even these Siberian tribes right here. And they have even more separatists. Japan is pushing into Manchuria. Ming has shrunk thanks to Dali and Tibet. And we have the nation of Manila right here taking over some land. Bara is doing really well and they've also started to, well, take over provinces from Eora. Finally, something is happening over here. This nation was doing nothing literally the entire game, so they don't deserve to exist. I'm on Bharat's side in this one. And now it's 1780 or second to last jump in time. And first, let's take a look at South America where Britain did Britain stuff. Basically, this is a big L for Inca. They were quite large and I was rooting for them to be honest, but sadly nothing came of that. This is the only place where Inca is left and they even have pretender rebels as well as this one province right here. And Britain has established Brazil, Argentina, Peru, and Colombia, all four of the South American colonies. Tapuya and Carib still aren't totally gone and neither is this nation, but they are currently losing to Great Britain, so I don't know how long they will stay alive. They have also established Mexico and California as well as well, they're about to establish Alaska, so it isn't looking too good for the New World nations, even though they were doing pretty good. In Africa, Dahomey has expanded even more into the Ottomans, they've even reached the Red Sea coast right here. You know, I always expect these fetishist nations right here to do not so well, but they end up surprising me, just like Congo a couple of videos ago. In Europe, the situation has changed, Byzantium has grown a bit over here in the Russia region, so that's pretty good for them, and there is currently a war going on where Morocco declared a war against the Ottomans and they're fighting the Ottomans, Kiva, France, Kazakh and Yarkand. They do seem to be winning though and on the side of Morocco there is the Kingdom of God, Kabia and Togurt. Byzantium is also integrating Brandenburg. Brandenburg is of course Orthodox right now, they forced them to change their religion and they have converted everything so that's pretty cool to see. Scandinavia have obviously built the Kiel Canal and speaking of the Ottomans, they suck even more. This is basically their heartland right now with some more provinces scattered here and there but basically Persia have been expanding into them very heavily. They are pretty much the only nation. Bara obviously can't expand into them anymore, they don't border them, so Persia has been taking a major advantage of that, as well as Dahomey, Byzantium, not so much, they haven't declared recently. The blow up of Oirat continues and now they are literally down to these six provinces right here. Basically we have a huge Ainu, these Siberian tribe nations, Kalka has grown and so has Kazakh, and this is occupied by Sunni zealots, and even Nogai popped out of the Ottomans. Bara is doing really well, they're in a war with Eora right now, of course they're beating them. And once again for the second time in these videos we have Bharati Australia, always good to see and we'll check back in for a final time in 1821. So it's January 6th, 1821, the end of the game, that actually ends January 3rd but I clicked play by mistake, oops. So let's take a look at what everyone has been doing and let's start off in North America with Comanche. Of course I gave them the totemist religion. Now Comanche were one of the most boring nations in this playthrough. They didn't really do much, their border was basically like this. They did conquer a bit of Mexico which had animist provinces from Putiguara and Nahuatl provinces from Aztec. Basically Nahuatl doesn't exist, well it does only in the province of Mexico. Then we have Maya. Of course, they had the Mayan religion. Now, they did conquer a bit in the beginning, converting Nahuatl provinces, but now they're pretty tiny. Moving down to South America, as you know, Putiguara started out with all the Animus provinces, which basically comprised 80% of South America, and Inca started with the Inti provinces. Now, Putiguara did decline, and Inca did expand. As we can see, they have converted about half of South America to Inti, but once again, both of those nations now don't exist anymore. Well, Putiguara does, but Inca Inca doesn't exist and Great Britain have taken over almost all of South America with only Tapuya and Carib remaining. In Asia, Ming had the Confucian religion. Of course, it was much bigger than this, but they collapsed and now they are very tiny. Basically, Dali took over all of those rump states and Dali are Confucian, but all of these provinces are Theravada. Japan is Shinto. They started out pretty weak. Now they've conquered almost as much as they started out with and Oirat was huge. They had all of the Tengri lands, but now they suck. Siam doesn't exist anymore. They represented the Theravada religion, which moved from here to here. And Daiviet, who represented Mahayana,
Mahayana doesn't exist, but we have Mynila right here who is Mahayana. We have Tibet, they're Vajrayana. They did expand a bit, but they also shrunk a bit. The Alcharinga nation doesn't exist. It got taken over by Bharati Australia, and Bharat has been doing an excellent job the entire game. They started off with Hindu, and they have expanded a ton into Southeast Asia and the Indonesian islands, and even into the Ottomans. Going to Africa, we have Dahomey. They started out with the fetishist lands, and they have expanded quite a bit, mostly into the Ottomans. So huge shout out to Dahomey. Speaking of the Ottomans, well, they started out basically the second most powerful nation in the game, and now look where they are. They're relegated to Arabia, the Horn of Africa, some provinces in Central Asia, and a few provinces over here. We have Ottoman Sus. Going over to Europe, Byzantium started off a very weak, losing two wars to the Ottomans and one to the Kingdom of God. But after that, the Ottomans declared a stupid war against them, where their troops were over here, and basically the Kingdom of God, who was guaranteeing Byzantium, had time to push into them as well as Byzantium, and after that, they got declared by a bunch of nations. Oman doesn't exist anymore, they were Ibadi, neither the Semyon who were Jewish or Ethiopia who were Coptic. But Persia did expand massively, I thought they would do really bad because of all the scattered Shia provinces and their border gore, but they did really manage to push through after the Ottomans got weak. The Kingdom of God, they didn't expand too much, basically mostly in Northern Africa and they took some provinces from Byzantium and Brandenburg as well, and they were involved in most of the conflicts even though they haven't expanded so much. Brandenburg got PU'd by Byzantium. They were Protestant, of course. Now these lands are Orthodox. Protestant doesn't exist. France started out with Reformed. I know I picked the most cursed nation to be Reformed, but I thought it would be funny. And they didn't expand too much. Scandinavia is Norse, and they pushed into North Germany, but that's about it. Bohemia started out as Hussite. Now they're Catholic, and they literally haven't done anything the entire game. At least Prague is 52 development, and Olmutz is 63. But the most boring nation award goes to Bohemia. And finally, we have Great Britain. They didn't do too much in the early and mid game but in the late game when they managed to get a province in South America their conquests really ramped up. This is a religion interface basically no nation is Protestant and no province is Protestant so they are the biggest losers. Oh just now I'm remembering I didn't make a Sikh nation. Well better luck next time. We also have non Coptic nations although there are eight provinces no Ibadi nations and only one province no Nahuatl nations only one province no Jewish nations no Jewish provinces no Hussite nations no Hussite provinces and no Zoroastrian nations, but there is one province. The religion present in the most provinces is Totemist, present in 437. The nation with the largest army is the Kingdom of God with more than 1 million troops, followed by Bharat, Persia, Byzantium, Dahomey, Great Britain, Scandinavia, France, Comanche, Bohemia, and so on. The nation with the highest income is also the Kingdom of God with more than 1500 ducats a month, followed by Bharat, Byzantium, Dahomey, Scandinavia, Persia, Great Britain, France, Bohemia and so on. This is what the religion map mode looks like as we can see South America, we have North America, not too much changes in Africa although North Africa is Catholic, Bharat has been doing converting, Animist is basically non-existent, Confucian has shrunk and so has Mahayana, Tengri is all over the place, Shinto has expanded and Sunni has lost the most due to Shia and Catholic and Orthodox expanding into it. Protestant is also a very big loser and there's not much I can say about Reformed Anglican and Norse. This this is what the Great Powers list looks like. The Kingdom of God is number one with almost 5k development, followed closely by Bharat, and then down the list we have Byzantium, Great Britain, Persia, Dahomey, France, and Scandinavia. And the Pope is an economic hegemon. So, what would happen if every religion was a nation? Well, definitely a lot of unexpected stuff. I didn't expect for the Ottomans to be destroyed like that, and I definitely didn't expect for Persia to expand this much. Very disappointed in Potiguara. They still exist in Greenland, in fact their capital is in Eriksfjord, but I am disappointed by some big nations, and pleasantly surprised by others like Persia, Bharat, and Dahomey. If you want to gain access to this save file and play it in the 1444 start date, you can become a tier 1 member and you can download the save file from the exclusive save games channel on discord let me know in the comments below what's the next what if video that you would like to see if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 12 percent of you are subscribed and you can become a member today thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video